Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen. It's a sad day here in the shed. The twin turbo Nissan 370 GT came home on the back of a tow truck the other day, and I'm not a happy boy. Let's take a bit of a look. As you can see, folks, I've been pulling a bit of stuff apart to find out what the cause of this failure was. Basically what happened, folks, I was driving along the road, knocked it back a couple of gears to uh, overtake someone who was turning off. Engine lost all power, started to make a really horrible mechanical sound from the engine. I pulled her up on the side of the road, shut it off, rang a mate with a tow truck, came and picked the car up, got it back here in the shed to start working out what's gone wrong. As I mentioned, there was a horrible banging, rattling noise coming from the engine. So naturally I thought the worst. Uh, my initial f feeling was, oh no, it's dropped a rod, you know, it's done a bearing or it's dropped a rod, something's happened to it. And part of the reason was I'd been out for a bit of a drive and I'd been really, really caning the hell out of it for probably about an hour and a half. And um, I thought, oh, I've just, you know, it, it hasn't been able to handle the punishment, which surprised me a little bit. So anyway, I've got it home and I've slowly been disassembling things because I didn't even want to turn the motor over in fear of doing more damage or buggering something else up until I worked out what the problem was. So I've just been working my way through things. First thing I did obviously was I dropped the pan, have a look at the oil, and the oil seemed pretty good. A very kind of a fine metallic sort of a whisper to it, but you know, I expect that when you've been you know, given something this much sort of a, a hard time. And plus, it, the oil hasn't been changed since it uh, since it was on the dyno either. So it's got quite a few dyno pulls and some pretty full-on test driving by me just to try and sort stuff out. Hasn't got that many Ks on it. It's, it's probably only done, I don't know, a few hundred Ks, I reckon, since it was uh, since it was put together. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a thousand Ks. I was getting close to doing an oil change on it anyway, but this is, you know, this happened and... The rest is history, folks. So I had a look at the oil. Oh, the oil's not too bad. It's like, you know, this, there's no signs of a major mechanical failure. So I thought I'll pull the plugs out. So I've taken the inlet manifold out, pulled the plugs out. Had a look at the plugs. Plugs all seem fine. Um, I'm a bit of a plug reader from way back. The plugs are good. No sign of detonation on the plug. The mixtures and everything look really good. So it's like, oh, this is all sort of great, you know. And I've got a boroscope here. So I had a look down inside the... The cylinders and all the pistons are great. No sign of detonation on the pistons. You know, everything's kind of looking really good. So I thought, okay, well, I'm at the point where I want to turn the motor over by hand to see if I can, you know, get a bit more of a handle on what this what this noise is. So I got underneath it, dropped the serpentine belt off and just started turning it over by hand. And you could hear the noise really obviously. And I started tracing the noise back to where it was coming from. And I'll throw it up on the hoist and I'll show you what I found. So as you can see folks, I've already been pulling a bit of stuff out from underneath here. The exhaust system's gone. Lots of bits and pieces have been removed. But I'll take you under and I'll show you what I found. And this will just blow your mind. You will not suspect this for a second. We're at the back of the engine folks. This is the transmission sump here. And this is the inspection plate that, that gives you access into the bell housing. Now, if you look up in here, you can see the gold color of the Fast Intentions flex plate that I installed in one of my previous videos. And if you look here, this is the ring that uh, your crank angle sensor reads off. And as you can see, folks, the ring has become detached from the Fast Intentions flywheel. Now I've, I've been turning it around and none of the bolts are sheared off, all the threads seem to have backed out. I don't know what the go with this is because this comes with this uh, sensor ring fully assembled. Whether whoever assembled it forgot to lock tight it or forgot to torque it up or whatever. But you can see here it's, it's sheared most of the teeth off the, off the sensor wheel. And it also took out the crank angle sensor in a big way. It took the whole bottom off it. And some of the bolts that hold the, uh, the torque converter onto the flywheel have got a bit of damage to the heads of them. So it was a bit of a thing. It's just like, oh, fuck of all the things. But I was also very relieved in one regard that, uh, that the engine was still okay. 
So now we've got to sort of get this out to look further and, you know, investigate the matter and see exactly what's caused it and what other damage has been done. So I've got a mate coming over. We're about to pull the transmission out, uh, hence why the exhaust system's off. And uh, we'll get the tranny out and we'll pull the flywheel off and we'll have a bit of a look. So I might just do that, folks, and uh, get the flywheel over on the bench and we'll have a bit of a look from there and I'll let you know exactly what's happened. And here it is folks, so let's have a bit of a look at the damage. You can see on our sensor ring here, in this position here, there's uh, all the teeth have been sheared off and this last one's kind of been bent over. Obviously I'd say this is where, where it took the impact on the bell housing uh, when it actually came adrift. Holes are a little bit messed up around the edges. And you can see I've got a bit of a collection here of all the fasteners for the sensor ring. So all of the fasteners have actually completely come out bar, the, bar this one here which has snapped off. So I would assume that this was the last one that was holding the ring in place. And as these have come off, uh, you know, as, it's, as, the, as the second last one's come off, it's probably twisted and then sheared this last one, which is what sort of took it out and stopped the car. I've managed to retrieve all the bolts. Uh, this is the this is the sheared off one here, and uh, some of them are a little bit a little bit more sort of mangled than others. Obviously, as they've been thrown around inside there, a few teeth off the sensor wheel. Um, I've managed to get pretty much everything because, as you'd be aware, it's pretty much sealed up inside the um, the bell housing. So. I've no idea on what the sort of spec is of these of how this is actually assembled but there's no sign of any Loctite or anything down in any of the holes. The threads are completely sort of clean. There's no sign of any Loctite on the bolts. So whether they are meant to be Loctited and they haven't been um, or whether these bolts are just put into a torque spec uh, without Loctite and they've come loose I have no idea but they're a very small uh, look like a, maybe a 304 or maybe a 316 stainless bolt um, which I imagine you wouldn't be able to put a hell of a lot of torque onto them anyway so I've no idea how they're meant to be set up from the factory but uh, yeah that's that's the result folks so I'd say these have just come loose and then this one snapped off rings come off it's gone berserk inside the bell housing, taken out the crank angle sensor uh, with a hell of a noise and everything, and then just stopped the car. So next step, I'm going to have to contact Fast Intentions and take a whole heap of photos and fill them in a bit and see if they've got any answers and, um, and what they're going to do about it. Because as you guys know, I'm in Australia, they're in the US, whether they're going to either come good with a new flywheel or ship me some parts and I can try and repair it here. Like I say, these threads all seem pretty good. I can't get this last one out. I haven't really tried other than having a little bit of a poke of it. But uh, yeah, that one's still in there. I, I reckon it's probably not going to be that hard to get out though. Oh, the other thing is some of the... Um... Oh, where are we? The other thing is some of the torque converter bolts copped a little bit of a pizzling. These were obviously in the firing line of the sensor ring when it came off, being that they're situated about here. So as it's come off, it's, it's sort of damaged a few of the heads of the ARP fasteners. Nothing major though, they just need a bit of a clean up to get a socket onto, but you know. So we'll see, I guess it's in the hands of Fast Intentions now to see what they say about it all. And in the meantime, I'm going to have to put my standard flywheel back in because this could be off the road for you know months and months and months after this. It's already actually been off the road for a month. I had it sitting here in the shed for a couple of weeks before I started pulling it apart. I was a bit depressed. <laughs> I was actually busy doing other stuff as well, but yeah, I wasn't real keen to get stuck in it. It was just a, a, a depressed me a little bit. But uh, yeah, seeing a flywheel's going back on so I can get it all back together, at least get it back up and running and have a little bit more fun because I think I'm having adrenaline withdrawals. And uh, I've got to get my fix, folks. So back together she goes. Standard flywheel's back in now, folks. 
and I'm just about ready to start putting the gearbox back. It was a huge, huge pain in the ass, by the way, to get the box out, just because there is very little access to get to all the bolts and everything, because of, you know, all the turbo stuff, the dump pipes and everything like that. It's just really, really hard to get to anything. But not impossible. As you can see, we've done it. Yeah, I'll take you in and give you a quick look while the gearbox is out, and you can sort of get a bit of an idea of how tight everything is in there. Yeah, she's she's freaking pretty tight in there, folks. Not a lot of room with all of the stuff. Actually, you can't see crap in there. I'll go and get another torch. That's a bit better. At least you can see what's going on. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. In the old girl. All right. Mmm. Anyhow, time to start getting it back together. Welcome back, folks. It's a few weeks later now. The car's back together with the standard flywheel in place, and she's purring like a kitten once again. But in the meantime, Fast Intentions have shipped me out another flywheel. I've got sitting on the bench, so let's have a bit of a look. And here they are side by side, folks. Black one is the new one, gold one is the old one, as you'd remember, with the disconnected sensor ring. Now all I can do, folks, is just tell you about how this all unfolded. So basically, I, I got hold of Fast Intentions, I sent them an email um, with photos of the, of the damage and um, all that sort of stuff. I linked them to my installation video on their flywheel and we exchanged a few emails backwards and forwards with questions they had about the vehicle and basically they just decided to send me another flywheel they said that this could be repaired but because of the you know the shipping and everything once again the fact that i'm in australia and they're in the us it would be easier and cheaper just to send out a new flywheel which they did and once they worked out that that's what they were going to do the the flywheel was here within a week it was actually shipped very fast and I must say that throughout the whole process, they were really, really good to deal with. Fantastic to have a company stand behind their product. You know, it, it's just been really positive. The only negative side to the whole thing has been I didn't actually get an answer as to what caused the problem. So I'm really back just to my own assumptions that there was an issue with these fasteners. They were either meant to be locked tighter than they weren't or they were meant to be torqued and they weren't or a combination of both which led to the failure and as you can see they've changed manufacturers with their billet flywheels they're either now making them in-house or they're getting someone else to make them because the the design of this flywheel is significantly different in a few areas to the gold one over here so let's get in a bit closer and have a look so one of the first things that you can see here, folks, is the, the problem area of these bolts that hold the sensor ring on has been addressed on the new flywheel with the fact that they have used the ultimate Loctite on the attaching fasteners. They've actually welded the top of all of the bolts. They've all got a weld on them. So there's no way that they are backing out, which in my opinion was the problem. Well, it obviously was the problem, but how it happened, uh, we still don't know. But they've welded them, so there's no chance of the same failure happening with the new flywheel compared to the old one. The sensor ring on this one is also held in a little bit better. It's very hard to tell with the black, but there is a lip here. Now, you can see my thumb's going up against there. There is a lip going around here. So this sensor ring actually goes into a lip. It's actually sitting in something. It's retained by that lip and then bolted down through. Whereas uh, on the gold one here, there is nothing. It's just, it's just, it's actually slightly raised where the sensor ring mounts on. So if that comes loose, there's nothing to sort of hold it. Whereas this is actually located uh, by the fact that it sits in a recess. The old one has an SFI spec approval thing on it, 
whereas the new one doesn't have anything like that and there is also a difference in the way the ring gear attaches uh, the ring gear on the older one has these little lugs here that there's a recess and the, and the ring gear has these little lugs or there's these little lugs that are attached through from the other side and then they're welded and you can see that the bolts that hold the this this section once it's all put together you know the weld is sort of transferred onto those as well so they won't sort of come loose so that's the difference from that side folks i'll just pull back and we'll flip them over and take a bit of a look from the other side because there are quite a few differences on the other side as well all righty so this one fast intentions fuel for passion manufactured by reactive products and i've looked up reactive products and they make billet flywheels for all sorts of vehicles. So they obviously subcontracted to Fast Intentions uh, to make these. Now this one over here, it just says Fast Intentions with the Fast Intentions logo. So whether they're now doing them in-house themselves or whether they've got another company doing them, um, yeah, I've no idea. You can see the recess that the um, torque converter mounts into is a different shape. All these cutouts and everything, they're sort of a rectangular-y thing there. These are sort of rounded out. Um, once again, the way the ring gear attaches, you can see here, these are the, the bolts that go through the other side that attach into that lug that's welded onto the ring gear. Um, you can see them all the way around. And the newer version, which I guess we should call the Mark II, you can see where it has bolts that attach it just from this side so it's just bolted in from this side and they are welded once again every single one of them is welded so there's no chance of any of those coming loose but what it also means is it would be a devil of a job to replace the ring gear on one of these things not that you probably would ever need to but then again it's probably not going to be any easier on the original one and that's about it for the differences. So, just flip it back over again. So on the Fast Intentions website now, the billet flywheel picture has changed to this black one from the gold one, which was on all their original advertising. So they've obviously phased this one out and moved into this one. Uh, as I said, they i got no explanation as to why this failure occurred but uh, going by the changes that have been made it's probably not the first time i would assume uh, the fact that the fasteners are now welded on the recess that holds the sensor ring you know that just sort of tells you a bit of a story as far as i'm concerned so uh that's where i am with it now folks i've got a busted fast intentions flywheel i've got a brand spanker one and I've got a car that's running a standard flywheel. You so say what I'm planning on doing for the moment, I'm not going to fit this. Reason being, when I data log in the Nissan, I'm still getting a little bit of transmission slip. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. And what I'd like to do is put together a performance rebuild kit uh, to my own specifications and um, rebuild the transmission. But that's a little bit down the line. I'd also like to do a torque converter at the same time. So it's it's probably not going to be until next year. Well, it's almost the end of the year now, so it definitely won't be until next year. But at some point, probably in winter here, I think I might um, attack the transmission. But I've got to bring in all the parts from the US to do it with. I can't find access to um, all of the components that I need. So yeah, that's about where it is, folks. So my recommendation, ladies and gentlemen, would be if you have one of the Mark I Gold Fast Intentions billet flywheel slash flex plates, um, I would put a weld on these fasteners that attach the sensor ring. You can actually get to this position through the inspection plate, which is used to uh, undo these bolts for the torque converter so you can remove the transmission. Uh, while the car is there you need to either get under the car or get it up on a hoist pull the inspection plate out and you could get in there with a mig and just zap the zap the head of these bolts uh, to make sure that they don't back out even to get under there and check them because like i say this did not have a lot of k's on it um, 
and there were no issues with the car previously and there have been no issues since so it was just something that happened whether i'm the only person this has happened to and i just happened to get a dud i don't know i don't think so going by as i mentioned the changes that have been made to the new flow wheel so as i say might be worth a bit of a look if you've got one of these pull your inspection plate off just check that your bolts haven't started to back out and if you're keen you could always just pull them out and put some red loctite on them and do them up or um, put a bit of weld on them so anyway folks that's how the saga has turned out uh, i hope that uh, gave you guys a little bit of information around this fortunately fast intentions were really easy to deal with being on the other side of the world it could have just been a huge pain in the ass but it's all good now like i say next year I'm going to rebuild the tranny, new torque converter. I'll put this billet, fl uh, billet flex plate in, and then we might be looking at squeezing a little bit more power out of the VQ37. But we'll see. As always, folks, thanks for stopping by the Aussie Shed. Bloody pleasure to have you here. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.